Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Louis Vuitton Speedy 25 Bandolier in the monogram canvas. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's go to work, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. First things first, I have to say a huge thank you to every single one of you guys for leaving such positive and uplifting thoughts uh, for Courtney on my last MMQA. I was reading all of the comments and just the support was just incredible to see. So thank you guys so much for that. And um, for the beginning of this Minx Monday, I figured that I would end up, um, I will address all of the questions that I've been getting uh, on my weight loss. I've been getting a lot of questions uh, throughout the last couple of weeks, last couple of months, and also on Instagram. So instead of doing, doing a dedicated video to it, I figured it would be best to do it this way. Uh, and if you don't want to hear anything about the weight loss, then I will put a timestamp on the description box below so you can go straight into the questions. Uh, so I'm going to freestyle this. I don't know exactly how it's going to work out, uh, but if I can help one person out there, then, you know, then it's all worth it. And I know that weight loss us, um, or weight in general can be a touchy subject. So, um, like I said, I'm hopefully I can help, you know, someone out there. I've been getting a lot of questions like what caused me to lose weight? What pushed me to lose weight? Was it difficult? Uh, what am I eating? Uh, how am I staying fit? Do I have a goal in mind as far as weight goes? Um, all right. So the main reason why I started to lose weight was because I did have gallbladder surgery five months ago. I had my gallbladder removed. And whenever you have that surgery, you're put on a really strict diet, um, uh, low carb, low fat, no fatty foods, no sugars, uh, just until your body adjusts to not having a gallbladder because the gallbladder helps, um, uh, it produces the bile to help, uh, break down the foods that you eat. So some people end up resuming back to their old eating habits within a couple of weeks, within a couple of months. It all depends on the person. Um, it was a little different for me only because I also have a fatty uh, liver. Uh, the doctor said that my liver not only had, uh, was very enlarged, it had the fatty deposits and it also had scarring. And he said that you need to change how you're eating. You need to change your eating habits because if you continue on this way, you're going to need a liver, um, a, a liver uh, surgery, a replacement. And that scared the crap out of me. Thankfully, the liver is one of those organs that can regenerate itself if you end up taking care of it. So I, it just kind of like hit me. It hit me like a ton of bricks. And I'm almost thankful, as bad as it sounds, that I had to go through that surgery just so I can push myself to get my health under control. I had no idea. I didn't, I didn't think I had that bad of a, of a relationship with food until now. You know what I mean? Um... When I was younger, when I was uh, even in my teens, in my early 20s, I was always referred to as skinny mini, skinny mini this, skinny mini that. And about 11 years ago, um, I, I had something happen and it caused me to kind of go into a funk. It caused me to really have a type of depression and the only comfort I found was food. You know how they say that some people eat to live. I was living to eat. I'm a foodie through and through. I love to go different places to try different cuisines. And it was all about the company and the association that I had with the food. Um, but I started to eat and I started to, you know, to pack on the pounds. And I had no idea. I didn't think it was that bad, you know? Like, I remember eating what I would eat before, and I'm like, oh, it's a little bit of this, it's a little bit of that, but I'm just like, oh, it's not that bad, it's not that bad. And clearly, it was bad enough to cause that much damage to my to my organs. But um, I get questions like, what are some of the things that I end up eating? Um, I can't process... Uh, I can't process red meat and I can't process pork. Uh, it ends up hurting my stomach really, really bad, so it's pretty much grilled chicken breast or chicken breast and fish are the two uh, main proteins that I end up eating. Um, we found different ways to prepare chicken, <laughs> it seems like, because uh, Robert has been such a rock throughout all of this. He also took to, um, to eating the way that I'm eating. Uh, so both of us have actually lost weight and we're trying to, to get healthier. Um, but 
uh, it's a lot of uh, vegetables, it's a lot of fruits, like I said before, no, no junk food, no fast food or anything like that, a ton of water, and I don't like water, I can't stand water, all right, and I know everyone's like, oh, it's so good, I just, I don't like the taste of water, <laughs> uh, but I'm drinking a lot more water and um, multivitamins that I didn't take before or anything like that. Um, but, uh, I also, what are some of the things that I end up doing to keep fit? I do, I run, I walk, uh, pretty much every day and I do a lot of, uh, dancing. I love to dance. I do a lot of intensive cardio. So that's really what I end up, what ends up working out for me. I am not a gym person. I don't like gyms. I feel very, I don't know. I don't, I just don't like being, um, doing weights here. I don't like doing the treadmill. I don't like doing that. I don't like being in one spot. For me, being out and about walking or running or doing all these other things is a lot better. Um, so that's what I end up sticking to. Uh, but even with the weight that I have lost, I don't see it. I don't see it. When I look in the mirror, I see that maybe I've lost two to three pounds. And when I tell people, or like when people ask me, you know, how much weight have you lost? And I, and I tell them, they're like, oh my God, no way. I didn't know you were that big before. That's crazy that you've lost so much weight. And they put such an emphasis on some of the words. And it really does a lot for your mental state because I'm thinking, was I that bad before? Was it that, was it like this? Was it that, you know? And I don't see the weight loss. I see, like I said, the two to three pounds, um, so doing like outfits of the day or doing clothing hauls, I feel very, very uncomfortable because I don't see, I don't see this many. I see old many, you know, and, um, when I, when I do do outfits of the day, I push myself to do it because I want to, I want to get in a healthier state of mind. So not only for my body, I want to do it for, for my, for my own sanity, you know? So I want to do more outfits of the day to push myself, to get myself out of that self image that I have. Um, you know, my mom's always telling me, oh, you look so good. You look so great. And she's so supportive and all of my family is. Um, but even with everything that I hear, I don't see it. And until I see it, that's when I'll feel comfortable. Uh, so clothes shopping was always a nightmare. I hated it. Going to buy jeans was the worst. Um, you know, but I found something that works for me. And like I said, for me, it's about getting my liver under control and being healthy. And the positive is the weight loss, if you will. Um, but it's all a matter of what ends up working out for, for you. And, you know, it's not, like I said before, I don't really like to associate diets. I'd rather do a lifestyle change because for me, it's about something that I can do for the rest of my life. I can't do a certain diet that you can only eat two or three things on that diet for the rest of my life. It, that doesn't work for me. That's why I always end up falling off the wagon. So now I feel like, um, whatever what we're doing as far as exercising and eating better, I can do that for the rest of my life. And before I would say, I don't want to work out because it's too cold. I don't want to work out because it's this. It's, and I'd always put up excuses. And now I'm, I'm, I might still end up drag my feet and say, I might end up dragging my feet and say, I don't want to work out because of this. But I push myself to do it because after I do, I feel really good. I feel like I have more energy. And I feel, I don't know, I feel like slowly but surely I'm getting to a different state of mind. And that's what I really like. Um you know, but it's definitely what ends up working out for you. Um, and now I feel like I can taste the food. Like I feel like I can taste the avocado. I can taste the chicken breast. Whereas before it all started to taste the same. I don't know, but, um, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy, especially when you're a foodie, like I mentioned, like I am, or when you have a major sweet tooth, like I do. Um, but I am trying my absolute hardest and everything I'm giving it my all to get my liver back to where it is. And I do have a goal weight that I set for myself and I'm almost there. Like I said, I still have a little bit to go. Um, and maybe once that happens, I'll end up changing my self image even more. But for now it's major baby steps. Um, <laughs> it's major baby steps for sure. 
but the main reason why I don't want to sit here and say this is what you should eat, this is what you should do. I'm not a nutritionist and like I said, everything, everybody works differently and every body is different. And if you like something, if you find something that works for you, then do it by all means, you know, but um, just give it your all. Give it your all. If you want to lose weight, if you want to get healthier, do it because you want to get healthier. And just the positive or the, the bonus is the weight loss. You know what I mean? And I feel like by viewing it that way, it kind of changes your perspective on it. Instead of saying, oh, I need to lose these 10 pounds. For me, it's more, I want to be healthy. I want to do this. I want to do that. And the weight just starts to come with it. So it's that added bonus. And that's how I'm, that's how I view it now. So I don't know if this, if this is helpful, but, um, just do whatever it is that you're doing, do it for you and just push yourself. You know, if you work out 15 minutes, 20 minutes a day, it's more than you're doing before. And then you'll start to see that you want to do it a little bit more and you want to do it a little bit more. And then it'll kind of be a routine. And once it comes, uh, once it becomes a routine, you're going to feel weird when you don't do it. You know what I mean? So I really hope that this is helpful and I really hope I was able to answer the questions. I'm trying to go through my head of all the things that people were asking. Um, so my apologies if I, if I didn't address something, but, um, you guys, you know, if, if there's anything that I can ever do to help any of you guys, if I can give you that extra push or if I can help you to not get to the point that I was, um, then I will always do that. But like I said, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section down below and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, but yeah, so that does it for the weight part of this, of this MMQA. Now let's get into the questions. On to the questions from Minx Monday with the first one from Miko Girly 99 When you resell anything from your current collection, more often do you end up losing money, making money, or just breaking even? I have sold a couple of things from my collection, but more often I lose money. I'm starting to think of it as a usage fee. Where do you most often sell your items? Uh, great questions. And uh, I usually end up selling my items on my second Instagram. Uh, I think we talked about this on a previous Minx Monday. Uh, and that is at Luxury Love. And I always have it on the description box below if you guys are wondering. Uh, and uh, you're starting to think of it as a usage fee. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> uh, but when it comes to uh, to selling my, my items, do I end up losing money, making money, or breaking even? I definitely end up losing money. And that's because of a few different things. Uh, I I really take into consideration the fact that it is pre-loved. Even if it's in pristine condition, it is pre-loved. And when you go on the pre-loved market, you're looking for the item not to be close to retail value. At least I don't, you know, because if you end up seeing something, let's say that's $1,250 on the pre-loved market and at the store it's $1,275 or $1,300, I'd rather just pay the $50 and get it at the boutique, you know what I mean? So uh, I definitely, I, 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 I think I'm very fair when it comes to pricing and I usually like to look at other consignment shops to see what they're selling it at and I try to come underneath or under that. Uh, so like I said, I, I think I'm pretty fair when it comes to, to that. I also end up losing money because of shipping. If I end up shipping within the U.S., uh, if it's, if it's within the U.S., I end up paying for the shipping and I pay for insurance and insurance on, um, on the price point of these items, it can be, can be quite high. And it, you know, the, the more expensive an item is, the higher the insurance is. Uh, and I also pay for the PayPal fees, uh, because whenever I do sell something, it's always through PayPal and I don't use friends and family. Uh, I always use goods and services. So I end up paying a fee on top of, uh, whatever I'm getting paid from the item. So, uh, between, uh, shipping insurance and the PayPal fee and, you know, uh, really taking into consideration the fact that it is pre-loved, uh, regardless of, uh, of the condition, um, then I usually end up, <laughs> and usually end up losing money and some things hold their resale value a lot more. Louis Vuitton holds its resale, uh, pretty well. It depends on the item. Some Bernie pieces don't, Epi items don't either. Um, and the cannabis pieces do the best. Uh, Chanel holds its resale value very well. And when you get into other fashion houses, that's when you start to really see just how, um, you know, just how, how the whole res or how the whole, um, 
uh, what's it called, how it works as far as how much money you're going to be losing on those items because, you know, the, the, the Hermes, Louis Vuitton, and Chanel always hold the resale value the best over any other fashion houses. And like I said, that's when you really start to see just how much um, money you lose when it comes to going uh, other routes. Uh, but for example, my Celine, I knew from the get-go that Celine doesn't hold its resale value. So I uh, ended up selling my many luggage. Uh, and like I said, I knew that I wouldn't be able to get anywhere near what I paid retail value for my mini luggage. I knew that, you know, I talked about it multiple times on my channel. So for me, I wouldn't end up pricing it at 3000 considering it retails for 3100 I went well, well under that, uh, you know, so I get what I want for the item. I think it's very fair and, um, you know, the person uh, is really excited about the item. So that always makes me happy. I did have someone ask once upon a time if I would end up selling my items more because I'm a YouTuber. I, and that's definitely something that I don't do. Um, this is a hobby and I, like I said, I, I take a lot of things into consideration when it comes to the pricing and things like that. So no, I will never upsell anything because of, of my YouTube channel or anything like that, you know, unless it's something that's crazy, crazy limited, like something that they only made 10 of in the U S or, um, you know, you, you can't get it because of X, Y, and Z or this, this and that, then, uh, the price might be a little bit more, but never the same as retail value. Never, never. It, this, this, that's not what, you know, <laughs> I'm looking for that deal. And that's what it comes down to when it comes to pre-loved goods. You want the deal. You don't want to pay for something that's retail price. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yes, I do end up uh, losing money, but it's all a matter of, um, you know, <laughs> the amount of money that I lose depending on the, uh, on the fashion house. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. But like I said in the, in the beginning, I know what you mean as far as the usage fee. <laughs> Next question from Bridget Nathan. Hopefully I said that correctly. Uh, can you tell me what you think of the new Graceful from Louis Vuitton? Uh, wonderful question. The Graceful from Louis Vuitton was recently launched. I believe it's now been about a week, maybe a week and a half. And uh, I will either insert a picture now. If I don't do that, then I will put a link on the, descript on the description box below where it says eye candy. That's usually what I end up doing so you guys can check it out. Uh, but the Graceful is available in two different sizes, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't see a GM, so please don't quote me on that. But the MM retails for $13.90 here in the States, and the PM retails for $12.50 here in the States. It's available in two different prints, the Damia Ben and the Monogram. Uh, so it is a canvas bag. Uh, now, there's a few different things that I like about the Graceful. I think that um, I, would, I would kind of consider it a, um, it, it kind of reminds me of the, like an artsy and a Galliera like if they had a baby, that's what the graceful is. That's what I envision it as, you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, there's a lot of people that are raving about the graceful because uh, it does have the magnetic closure. It also comes with a flat shoulder strap. So I think that it'll make for a more comfortable handbag. Now, even though this bag is considered a hobo, I feel that it ends up holding its structure a little bit better than most other hobos out there. Uh, in particular, the Sully. Uh, I had the Sully and I fell in love with the bag in the beginning, but then it just kind of really lost its shape. And I don't, I don't foresee that happening too much with the graceful. Like I said, it, even though it is a hobo and it is slouchy, it's still somewhat structured. Um, but it also comes with this really cute luggage tag charm on the side. I'm just like, that is amazing. <laughs> so, uh, I think that this bag offers quite a bit for the price point that it has and the fact that it is very, uh, similar. It, like I said, it reminds me of an artsy without that crazy price point that the artsy has. I think that a lot of people will end up loving this bag because of the comfort that it has and the fact that you're able to open everything up and see everything at a glance. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's not for me only because of the hobos that I've bought in the past and I don't have any hobos in my collection anymore uh, because I just don't like that they slouch too much. It's a little too slouchy for me even with the fact that this one might hold its structure a little bit better. It's still not... Um, you know, I've kind of uh, gone away from hobos in general. Uh, but uh, like I said, I think it's a beautiful bag and it has a great, great price point and... Um, I, I really foresee this bag being very, very popular within the next couple of weeks, just because also how lightweight it is. Uh, it's not heavy at all. Uh, so that's another great feature that it has. So uh, not for me, but I think it is a, uh, I think it's a really great bag. And uh, I also feel that it's, it's simple, but it's not 
it, I don't know, it's simple, but it has just those extra little features, those little details that really add to the overall look of the bag. Uh, but uh, hopefully I was able to answer your question. Next question from Island Girl 8. What are your thoughts on the Lady Dior? I've admired it for years, but never pulled the trigger. I just felt it was a little too boxy, fussy, and formal for my lifestyle. However, the new supple Lady Dior is stunning and seems to solve the issues I had with the original classic. Would you invest in a bag that deviates from the classic version? This is a fantastic question, and I agree with you 100% when it comes to the Lady Dior. Um, I had it on my wish list once upon a time. I loved the idea of it, but I also felt that it was a little too boxy. Even though I am one that appreciates structure in a bag, I just felt it was just a little too much. You know what I mean? Uh, but the supple version, I think, just kind of, um, it's almost like they, you know, I looked at the Lady Dior and I was thinking, oh man, I really wish it had this. And then the supple Lady Dior came out and that's exactly what it was. So for me, it really checks off all those marks that were, that I was a little hesitant on before with the classic version of the Lady Dior. Uh, so I'm all for it. So what I end up deviating from, um, would I end up investing on a bag that deviates from the classic version? Absolutely, especially for the reasons that I said. If there's something about the bag that you really like, but let's say that you would, you know, you're thinking, oh, I really wish that they would tweak the strap, or I really wish that they would do this, or if they ended up doing uh, small changes and then introduce that, then absolutely I would, hands down, because it's really what ends up working out for my lifestyle. So if the seasonal version or if the uh, non-classic version works out better than the classic, Classic, uh, I know that I'll get more use out of this one versus the classic version, you know, and I'm all for classics. I appreciate classics. I, I mean, I love the history and I love what they bring to any collection. But at the end of the day, it's all a matter of if that bag works out for your lifestyle or not. So the Supple Lady Dior, I am all for it. The leather looks amazing on it. I, <laughs> I absolutely love it. Even though I am also a big fan of the classic lambskin, the Supple version just, I don't know, it has that different... It gives it an overall different appeal, a different, um, a different look that I feel makes it makes the bag a lot more casual, and I think that's what I appreciate about it the most. So definitely, hands down, I would end up uh, going for something that's non-classic if it had the tweaks that I was really um, that I was really looking for. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. Uh, all right, next one from Stephanie K. What are some of your non-luxury prized possessions? No jewelry bags in the equation. Oh man, <laughs> this is a great question. Um, I actually have a lot of little knickknacks that I hold very near and dear to my heart. Yes, I love my handbags. Um, and like my wedding set and jewelry pieces that I've gotten from my mom or, or you know, from, from family members. Um, but I like, some people might think it's kind of ridiculous, but I like the smallest, the smallest thing. Um, for example, I have, um, I have notes and letters that Robert would put in my lunch bag. Uh, he would put them in my car, on my windshield, and it would just be something like, um, you know, I hope you have a great day, I love you. Something so simple, something so small, but I have kept every single one of those letters. Uh, so I have them in a box. It's almost like a, um, what do people call it? Um, not a memory box. I forget the name. There's a specific name that people give a certain box that they put all their items in. I, f I don't know the name. I forget. <laughs> uh, but I have I have every single one of them. Uh, you know, we've been together quite some time, so <laughs> I have quite a few of them. And there's also something else that um, I keep, and those are corks. Now, whenever we have a special occasion, if it's for Valentine's Day, birthdays, um, any type of special occasion that we have, if we end up drinking champagne or if we end up having a bottle of wine, uh, of course, I used to, um, you know, used to be able to drink those a little bit more before, but I always keep the corks and I end up putting the date on there and just a small like abbreviation for what it was for um, because it just brings me so much joy you know whenever I see them and I have them in this like, like in this jar uh, and every time we have like I said a special occasion or anything like that the cork goes in there it goes in there and I've been doing it for years uh, so 10 plus years <laughs> worth of corks that I have uh, but I don't know I just I like it and it's something that's small. So that to me is a major prized possession that I have uh, because of all of those memories. And of course I hold the memories in my heart, but I like having them on something tangible such as the cork. Um, and an another one that I have is 
the canvas um, that Robert gave me for my birthday last year and that was a picture of Edward that I had and Edward was wearing a tie. I would take it down so you guys can see it if you guys haven't but uh, it's actually in my living room and I can't reach it. <laughs> so uh, since I'm here by myself right now, I, I can't get to it. Um, but it's this really big porch, this canvas, and I just melted my heart. I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that portrait of Edward. And um, I know that that's one of the things that would come with me no, ma no matter what. Like if there was a fire type of thing, type of situation, that's one of the things I would end up grabbing. So those are some of my prized possessions. Like I've said, you know, I like the, the luxury bags and I like um, other luxury pieces and stuff like that. But for me, it's the other small, like everyday items that really have a lot more meaning, you know, for me anyways. Um, but I have a lot more. I'm, I've told you before, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of a pack rat. So I have a lot of things that, <laughs> that I hold near and dear to my heart. Um, I mean, I'm not saying I have like boxes and boxes in my room or anything like that. No, but I have a lot of items that I've held on to, um, you know, for, for so many years. So just to name a few. Ah. <laughs> and the last question from Lux Lab Life. I'm getting married next month and the fiance is supportive of me doing some luxury shopping on our honeymoon. I've been drooling over the Speedy Bee and Damien Ben, and there's a Louis Vuitton walking distance from where we are staying. However, his grandma, as a wedding gift, booked us a week at her Hawaii timeshare for our one-year wedding anniversary. At that point, we will have been together for 10 years. We're getting married on our nine-year dating anniversary. I'm tempted to wait until we go to Hawaii next year and getting a limited edition bag. It's just with canvas becoming more difficult to find, I'm worried about not being able to get the Speedy Bee. Plus, I don't like most of the Louis Vuitton limited edition pieces, so it would be risky to wait. What if I don't like the limited edition next year, if there even is one? Any input on this? WWMD, what would Minnie do? I absolutely love that. <laughs> very, very cute. Uh, well, first and foremost, major congratulations on your upcoming nuptials. That is awesome. I love the fact that you guys are also getting married on your dating anniversary. Uh, that's what Robert and I did, and it really keeps um, it really keeps that date very, very special. So that's that's awesome. Uh, all right. So would I wait for Hawaii to get a limited edition piece, possibly if you like it, or would I get it on my honeymoon? hands down, I would end up getting it on my honeymoon. Um, and only because of what you said, it would be risky for you to wait to go to Hawaii uh, to see the limited edition pieces that they have uh, because you might not end up liking it. And by that point, um, it might be even harder to find the speedy bandolier that you're looking for. Uh, and, um, you know, like for example, with the Hawaii pieces, last year's I really liked the V with the hot pink. I thought it was amazing. And then this year they had the Tahitian, um, they had the Tahitian green and I bought the mini pochette when, when, when we were in Hawaii, I ended up returning it while we were there because it's a lot of green to commit to. And I'm not really a green person and I'm not really an orange person. And those are the two colors that are very, um, you know, that, <laughs> that are most on that item. Um, so it didn't end up working out for me. So who knows next year, they might have something completely different. They might have something a little bit more, um, you know, it might be something that maybe wouldn't work out for your collection, but the main reason why I would end up getting it on your honeymoon is because you're attaching an amazing, an amazing memory to that Speedy Bee. So you'll remember exactly where you got it, when you got it, you got it on your anniversary. And I am all about that. I'm all about the meaning behind the item uh, and being able to get it uh, at such a special moment. Uh, plus, like you said, um, if, it's, if it's getting harder and harder to find the canvas pieces now, if you're able to get it while you're on your honeymoon, then you don't have to worry about, um, you know, about finding it later on or what if it becomes super, super scarce type of thing. So for that reason, for those, for those couple of reasons, I would hands down, absolutely no questions asked. I would end up getting it on my honeymoon because I think that would be just amazing. And like I said, the memory that you're attaching to it, it's just become one of those um, sentimental pieces that you will value, you know, that sentimental pieces that you will uh, have in your collection, I would imagine for, um, for a long time to come. Uh, but, uh, 
Um, you know, another great thing about Hawaii is that let's say that you uh, do get the Speedy Bee on your uh, on your honeymoon. When you go to Hawaii, the pricing is always a little bit less than it is on mainland, so you can always save a little bit of money that way as well. And you might end up finding something uh, different. So maybe if you're not too crazy about the bag that's limited edition, they might have small leather goods that you're really interested in that you can only end up getting in Hawaii. So that's another way that you can look at it. So you have a special piece uh, from your honeymoon and then you have one for your 10 year um your tenure being together that you can get in Hawaii as well. Uh, but definitely, I would end up getting it on uh, on my honeymoon, for sure. <laughs> I think that is awesome. Uh, but I wish you both, um, you know, all of the happiness in the world. Uh, and hopefully that was able to help. All right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome, awesome questions. Uh, and again, a huge thank you to all of you guys for all of the support and all of the love on uh, last week's MMQA and helping, uh, you know, helping out Courtney. You guys were amazing, so I appreciate that immensely. Uh, all right, so for this week's lineup, I have my monthly favorites. I think it'll probably be up either Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, and I also have a couple of tag videos that I'm going to try to, to do this week. I was tagged by my beautiful friend, Andre, who's also on YouTube. Make sure and check her out. She has an amazing uh, channel. She tagged me to do a couple of videos, so I'm going to try to get those out as well, as I said. Uh, but yeah, so that does it for MMQA. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I will see you guys later this week. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.